Hey, 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 it's Dot NYC show number five. I can't use the new kid excuse about we don't know what we're doing much longer, but I'll still use it for now. We're still figuring things out, trying to figure out what to do as we create this show on the Twit Network from the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism here at the heart of the universe, Times Square. Uh, and I'm delighted today that we have Christina Warren from Mashable as our co-host and uh, Felix Leitner uh, from um, uh, CUNY and, and a, new, a new conference on the future of work and all kinds of good things around. We've run across each other all the time. So uh, here we are on episode number five. I just wanted to get going. And uh, what's the biggest news of the week? Christina. It's Chewbacca. 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 Come on, the Facebook Live that's literally been seen by everyone on the planet. Right, so I know they've talked about it elsewhere on the Twit Network, but it, but we can't not talk about it with the to. future of news and the future of TV and the future of media. I mean, I for one welcome our Facebook Live overlords, first of all. Let's just say that, get that out of the way. Um, but this is huge. So 140 million people have tuned in to watch a woman unbox, the most watched unboxing of all time, I guess, unbox a Chewbacca mask. <laughs> I didn't even think it was an unboxing. It was an so unboxing. It's an video. unboxing. Like, yeah. who, who knew? Like the move over iPhones, you know, move over you know Android phones. Uh, this is this is what people care about. It, it's Star Wars masks and the, the sheer joy on her face of, of putting the mask on and, and emitting the Wookiee cry. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic uh, and and it's I think it's so interesting when we talk about the future of news because Facebook's been pushing the Facebook Live platform so much, but they have they've been pushing it to news organizations, uh, but also saying regular people can create things too. And this is the perfect example of a regular person really creating the most viral moment that Facebook video has ever had. Did you watch it? Yeah. It. Yeah. I still can't do the sound though. <laughs> I know. Yeah, try, try your Chewbacca sound. It's Here it is. Probably something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I kind of want to drive around like this. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to let Chewbacca talk here. <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 and I think real. I, mean, I, I yes. have this horrible fear this week. We're going to find out that it was planted. It was, it was a Hasbro stunt. Uh, uh, right. Disney, somebody did something. And yes, Kohl's turned into a bit of an ad and showed up. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't like that. But I thought it was fine. They got free, Kids got free toys. What's not to love about that? Um, uh, but 140 million views. Crazy. And that's, and that's just the ones on Facebook Live. Obviously, people have ripped it and put it on other, on other platforms. So it's on YouTube. It's on Tumblr. It's, it's on every you know social site you can think of. And... Um, this is this is the best thing that that could have happened oh. to Facebook Live at this moment. Yeah, and I, I think the genuineness of it versus the frankly a bit cynical rubber band around the watermelon totally. act, which is we're gonna we're gonna exploit this, we're gonna exploit everybody's attention, we're gonna try to figure out how to just use you to get attention. Right. This was somebody who was doing something earnest and and real, and her she's charming, and her laugh is infectious, and she wanted the attention, and that's okay. Now she can totally. do it. She got it. Yeah, and she a got large it. grocery chain. Was it Coles? Coles. Yeah. Coles. Yeah. Gave the whole family these masks right away. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, the truth is, she's Harnessing. worth millions. Oh, completely. To Coles and to Facebook, both. Yes. Uh, she came into Good Morning America, I think, yesterday. She was here on Times Square, not far away in the neighborhood. Uh, still excited, still doing Facebook Live, saying, look at me, I'm at the GMA, and here's, here's Times Square, because it is the center of the universe, don't forget. Uh, so I, I, I want to mark, mark that, I think. I'm afraid we're going to see all kinds of really bad efforts to copy it. We will, but I think that the ones that stand out, the ones that go viral, will probably be the ones that have that, that realness or yes. are calculated enough and, and are compelling. Yeah. So, But you're right. We are going to welcome to the copycats. It's going to be like the, you know, the uh, the Kickstarter for potato salad all over again. What I, what I also hope doesn't happen is that we see this again and again when someone goes through a huge rush of fame. Yeah. How uh, people then get mean and drop them and do other things. I hope she just is still a mom who has a great laugh. And that's all I want. Her whole Facebook feed is hilarious. Like she yeah. was funny before that. Yeah, she is. And and she was she was an act, she she studied theater, which is kind of perfect. I saw on her totally. Facebook feed, right? So yeah, so it's uh, uh, all for, all for you, Candace. Um, so Google I/O. Google I/O. Uh, I had the privilege of being there. You were uh, virtually there. I was virtually there. Uh, we all kind of watched what went on. More I thought about it, the more my head was spinning with the implications of all the things at I/O for especially for us in news and journalism and media. Um, uh, just all around, let's go through them one by one. Uh, let me start here with, with um, the progressive web app. 
If you all haven't gone to see this, Washington Post is the guinea pig. I think, I think Washington Post is now the go-to place. Uh, do you hear that New York Times yeah. next door? Uh, for trying to, to do new things with the platforms because they're playing along and they're, they're doing good stuff. And so if you go to Washington, this does not work on your tablet, which I don't understand why that doesn't work. It doesn't work on your laptop. On your phone, on Chrome, go to WashingtonPost.com slash PWA. It doesn't stand for people with attitudes. It stands for Progressive Web App. And um, it is instantaneous. It will load immediately. immediately. So, so we've already seen that with AMP. What's more important is that it loads the entirety of the Washington Post, the edition of the Washington Post. And it caches it all so you can use it offline. So that becomes instantaneous and completely there. And it, my first thought was this kills the app, right? What does this do to the app? Why do you need an app? Why do I need to download the Washington Post app anymore when I can just use a progressive web app? What did you think when you saw it? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think you're right. It, it could kill the app, but I think it could also maybe bring, make the app more valuable because it might make more people aware of what the app is. So if you enjoy the progressive web app, if you like that experience, if it's instantaneous, maybe you will actually be compelled to download the Android app and use that too. But you're right in, in that it, it is making it instantaneous, which is which is a huge thing you want for news, right? Because you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're in the subway, you know, if you're in New York or, or another major city and you can't read the news. You want to be able to have that there. So the fact that it's cash, the fact that it's instantaneous, is really great. Uh, and I love it. it, it it's, it's possible because of two things. One is AMP, the, automa- uh, the um, uh, accelerated mobile pages, which I've talked about tons on Twig. Uh, but then the second thing is what they call the service worker, uh, which sounds like it's a, it's a conference room filled with, with workers trying to you know, kill conservative <laughs> news. But that's at Facebook. Um, and the most overblown story of the month, let me add quickly. Completely. Uh, so the service worker is just a, 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 the browser calls to the service worker rather than calling directly to the um, uh, the server and the service worker can recognize what it's going to have and then cache all the content. So it really puts more control into the hands of the developer, uh, and and I think it's really an important development in the future of the web. So then that's on the one hand. On the other hand. Uh, you have something I know you're excited about, yeah. which is instant apps. Instant apps. Explain that. And so the idea behind instant apps is that instead of having to have an app downloaded on your phone at all times, if you just need to access something, one of the examples they gave on stage was the BuzzFeed videos app. They also showed off the the B and H uh, shopping app. You know, maybe you don't, maybe you want to watch a video in the BuzzFeed video interface, but you don't want to download the app. You could click on a link that would open up in Google. It would open it up in an app experience. It would look just like the app. It would play, interact just like the app, but it wouldn't install it on your phone. The same thing with B&H. You click on a link to go to B&H. It doesn't take you to their mobile website. It takes you to their app, which would integrate with Android Pay and maybe would have your shopping carts and maybe a better experience. You could you know, buy your camera, check out, and be done with it, and the app doesn't take up space on your phone. So here again, I'm trying to go back and forth. Does this mean, does this, is this a blow against apps or in favor of apps? I think it's in favor of apps, but it's just talking about how the idea that I think most of us would probably agree, we don't want to have, I have 800 apps. This is not hyperbole. I actually have 800 <laughs> apps installed on my iPhone. That is too many. That is stupid. Yeah, is. That, 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 that is too much. And you only use you know, a handful of them a few times a year. So the idea is that maybe rather than trying to always have apps on your phone at all times, use them when they're necessary, and access them accessibly. So the fact that you could deep link them from Google results means maybe I'll use an app more than I would otherwise, um, but I don't have to have it installed. And it also does promote the app. It, it does, does, it does say app. to you, hey, would you like to download so this? Exactly. If, you, if you got a taste of it, you if like it. If you got it. a taste of it, you like it, you go, you know what, actually, I really like this BuzzFeed app. I really want to watch videos all the time, but maybe I just want to watch it once. I don't need to have it installed at all times. So then on the other, other hand, we have the news that Android will be on Chrome. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a Chromebook user. I long time coming. Chromebook. It is a long time coming. And um, it'll be first be available, I think, on the Chromebook Pixel uh, 2015 mm-hmm. and the Asus Flip and one of the other. One so, of the other Chromebooks. Yeah, in a beta channel, not till June. Uh, but what they showed at I.O. Is that, is that it's not an emulation of Android. It is Android fully running as part of Chrome. Which is really interesting. Which is really interesting. So you so you're so you're really able to run so they didn't they didn't it's not the one OS one necessarily yet, but Android becomes part of Chrome. Definitely. I mean, it, and that's just interesting, even from like a Linux standpoint, to get really nerdy about things about how they're they're you know um, manipulating Linux so that they can have those two you know interfaces at once. And and like you said, it's not an emulation. It is running natively, and it's running in its own you know uh, user areas 
data is, is shared the right way, uh, which is obviously a big concern for them to bring Android to Chrome to begin with was the security concerns. You know, do you right. how, how how is data going to be shared and, and how is this going to be secure? But it looks like they've done it, and this is huge, I think, for for Chrome OS, which just recently in the United States, you know, is now outselling Macs. Um, that's been doing it in the rest of the world for some time, but now you know more people are buying Chromebooks than are buying Macs. And the fact that now you're going to have this huge library of applications available too, I think it speaks huge things to the platform. And if I'm Microsoft, you know, if you weren't already worried and they should have been, now I think it's really something to be watching out for. Yeah, at the same time, Microsoft in essence gets out of the phone business and sells stuff. Right. Uh, uh, you know, the OS world changes. We'll talk about Android in one second, but just. For those uh, who are, are new to me uh, versus Twig, I talk about this all the time, but I've been using a Chromebook uh, as my sole computer for more than two years now. Wow. I, I live, uh, La Vida Google, I live entirely in the cloud. I don't worry about running apps. This one's getting a little slow, something's wrong. After the show, I'll rebuild it. It will take five minutes and it'll be back to just what it was. Chrome is phenomenal. So I, I, I have my Android phone, my Chromebook, I have a, a the uh, Pixel C tablet. Um, the Any question. downsides at all with None. using this? No, I can I can get offline content. Uh, my my docs and my mail sync, so I get those on the plane. Um, the only thing that doesn't run on this is Skype. Okay. But there's a web version. Yeah, that. but it sucks. Okay, it doesn't okay. work yet. Doesn't work yet at all. So when I try to do Skype to the Twit network, um, it's awful. So I now use the Pixel C for that. But that's it. I have. I am happy as can be. I don't have bloatware coming in. I don't have to worry about installing things. I don't have to worry about security, and it automatically updates the the OS. Which, by the way, that great trick from Chrome is now going to be on Android. Yeah, which is great. So now your OS will just will just update on its own, and you'll be up to the latest version, and it's fine. So they really are taking the best of both OSs. Now you wrote a piece, Ted. moaning, whining, complaining yeah, uh, about Android as an OS. I mean, I, okay, the, the title was a little bit inflammatory. I'll admit it was called "Android is Boring," um, and and but it's not just Android. All OSs are boring, and I'm a little bored right now. Which look, I appreciate the restraint that Google showed with with Android in. They didn't even give it a name. That's that's a little disappointing. I don't like the whole crowdsource name thing. Come on, name your own operating system. Don't don't leave it to the crowd. That, that, that's how we get Bodie McBoatface. Well, they immediately said, no, Navy McName Face will not work. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, um, mobile modern mobile OSs are approaching 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nine, nine, 10 years old. And we're at a point where there's not a lot of room for them to kind of grow. And I think that's proof by what we're seeing with Android and Chrome finally kind of merging into one. And that's great. I love that, that we've reached uh, so many feature parity between iOS and Android. But at the same time, I can't help but be bored. It's like I want some other, whether it's a user interface paradigm or it's a new way of accessing things or, or a hot new feature. As, as, a, as a tech geek, as a, as a journalist, I can't help but just say, look, I want my sizzle. And I didn't see a lot of sizzle. Okay, but Christina, I think actually you did. Okay. I think what you saw is Google Assistant and Google Home. I agree. But are those the are next features. generation of OS. I agree with you. If that's integrated fully into the OS. Right now it looks like they're features that kind of live in the cloud ambivalent of the OS itself. I think it actually lives above and beyond the OS. I think that what will happen, in, and so Google Assistant is basically the new philosophy of Google, that Google should go from anticipating your needs to assisting you. Um, and, and, and the next step is suggesting when they know you well enough. So in the assistance, you'll be able to just say to a device, say to, to, the, to the Google Home device, um, uh, ask a question. Uh, the example that, that Sundar Pichai gave on stage was, uh, what's playing at the movies tonight? And you get three movies, and you say, I want to take the kids. And it knows that you have kids and how old they are, So because Google knows everything. <laughs> and so it suggests a different movie. And then you can say, well, how good is it? What are the reviews? And and it knows the antecedent of what it refers to. Exactly. And comes back well, that, with that's, that. that. That's the big uh, breakthrough is the fact that you don't have to immediately say, you know, um, what's playing tonight at the movies? What movies are playing for kids? What are the reviews mm -hmm. for this movie? It knows that it's you not part of one conversation. You don't live anymore. Precisely. You're all living right. in one conversation where it understands the context. That and it, it understands beforehand. you. Exactly. And, 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 and so then you can say to it, uh, I, I want to go 7 o'clock, and it will come back and buy the tickets for you, having so, gone off the apps on its own. Would you say they're leading the personal assistant field now, like all this competitiveness that's going on? In a way, I think Google was catching up in everything yes. they did, right? Uh, Allo, which is their chat thing, catches up with uh, uh, Facebook, yeah. WhatsApp. Uh, Duo, which is their uh, 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 video chat thing, catches up with FaceTime. Um, uh, home catches up with Amazon, and, and Sudar Pichai did give a salute to Amazon for its leadership with Echo. However, Google has 
incredible abilities at artificial intelligence, at uh, voice recognition and la natural language processing, and they have data about us to I be was, able to use that. I was going to say the data is the huge thing. I yes. mean, what's so interesting to me about, about this is that on the one hand, they did come to this late, but because they're coming at a time when the whole voice assistant game is kind of moving from, as you said, that bullion search to be more context driven and more about what do you want now anticipatory, they could, they, I think they have the opportunity to actually be ahead of the curve. Yeah. So I think I think mm -hmm. they, they are definitely behind in that sense, but their, their capabilities go beyond all of the others. And... So this is, to me, the, it, was, it was actually Microsoft who said it. Conversation is the new OS. Right. That you can just simply have a conversation with something that cuts out the OS. It eliminates the OS. Now, the last point I want to make here before we, before we go on to, to, to the future of work is the future of journalism and what impact this has on us. To me, this chunks up the notion of content entirely. You ask a question, you get an answer. You don't have to then search and pick and go to a page. No, you get the end result answer. Well, what's cut out there is the brand. Uh, and, and so what we have to do in media is chunk up what we do. So it's servable through a bot in Allo, through uh, a question to Google Assistant through Google Home, uh, through all these other mechanisms. And I think that's the future of informing people. It's going to be very troubling to us in our industry because you're not going to say, well, you have to go to my page to see my ad. Right. Uh, I don't know what the business model is. My colleague here at CUNY, um, Carrie Brown, who's brilliant, said when she read, I sent a memo to my friends about what I saw at I.O., and she said, well, it, it enforces the idea that journalism has to become less a product and more a service. And you have a relationship with a service you trust, and you say to Google Home, I hope, ask the New York Times this question. And the New York Times comes back with the answer because you trust the New York Times. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. It's 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 another range where I think we cut uh, out the OS and we cut out the idea of media as a mediator. And that's scary. It is scary. Do, do, do you wonder if people are going to then try to, it'll become a product of deals the same way we have with other things. So the service maybe rather, I mean, you might be able to get, you know, what does the New York Times say? But really the real move here would be for the New York Times to make a deal with Google to be the, the news uh, feed that it's pulling in from its algorithms. The, the yeah, but I don't. I, I think that, that somebody else wants the Wall Street Journal, and somebody else wants something else. And, right. Yeah, but, we, but, we, but, uh, but I guess my point is, is that even though people want different things, and maybe Google can distinguish what you want based on your reading habits, but is it up to then those companies to, to even further now make those kind of partnerships to try to be yeah. on those places to be the default? Even without the default to be available and and to be promoted uh you know one of the paradoxes of this we've already agreed non-story i think it was a non-story on, the, on the facebook situation is that facebook said we didn't really find bias but what we're going to cut out is using top media properties so the uh, as as uh, some have said uh, zainab tefeski who's brilliant on this stuff uh said on twitter last night that was the best part of their process was going to known media properties right. and, and now for various reasons it's out. So yes, I think we've got to hope that brands have a role. I think Facebook and Google realize that, but it's going to be an entirely new and different structure. We're not going to know how this operates. All right, enough of IO geeking out.